up, guys? How y'all been? How y'all been? It's been a minute, for real. How y'all doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, man. What's up, guys? My name is Gabe. I'm a developer advocate here at Hex, and I'm just here to walk you guys to this course on Hex Foundations. This course is meant to help you wonderful people bring those wonderful, those beautiful data ideas that you guys have in your head to life. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we're gonna dive in and start building up that intuitive muscle so that you guys can start better navigating the Hex UI. So there's not that much confusion about going like, what does this button do? Or what is this message saying? What's going on? I can't tell. In this lesson, we'll be covering what the workspace is, what we'll the introduction to the logic view, and then we'll also show you guys how you guys can add some cells to your projects. And by the end of this, you guys will have a solid grasp on all the tools that you guys need to start building up your own projects in Hex and become the masters, the masters of Hex. Oh. Okay. All right, so logging into Hex lands us in the workspace view, and we'll split this up into three... into three sections. We have the top bar, which allows us to switch our workspaces. We can switch to the project view, the settings view, or we can import existing Drupal Nova projects or start our own new ones. On the sidebar, we have our knowledge section, we have our project section, and then we have some tags. And you can also go to the settings view from the bottom of the sidebar. In the middle, we have our content window, and this just shows you what the current content is of the screen that you're currently on. So if I were to switch to say collections, I would see something different. If I were to go to components or projects, I see something different depending on the screen that I'm on. Right now, we're on the home page, and this may be looking a little bit bland right now. And, and that's basically just because it's a brand new workspace and we haven't actually really created anything yet. So let's go ahead and change that by start starting our first brand new hex project. So to start a new project, all we need to do is go to our top bar and hit new project and we will be landed in the logic view of Hex. Now, this is where everything that happens in Hex happens in Hex. This is where every project, every discovery, every insight is made. Everything happens here in the logic view. Now to get started, we see some initial options. We see we can add a Python cell, we can upload a CSV file, or we can go ahead and start with an SQL cell. At the bottom, we see this toolbar, which allows us to add any type of Hex cell to our project. So we can add Python, components, text, markdown, and we'll you guys will see all of these cells in upcoming videos, so don't worry, we won't be covering it today, but you guys will see all of these uh, in upcoming videos. But wait a second, Gabe, what does this talk of different types of cells mean and what even is a logic view? What'd you turn off? Oh. Technical difficulties will be back right after this ad. Today. Today. Well, the idea of the logic view was built on the concept of a notebook. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, think of a notebook as a place for you to put all of your work. Say like all of your code, all of your data, your visualizations, anything that you wanna do in your project, all in one unified place. To make our notebooks organized rather than a chaotic mess, we put all this information inside these bite-sized units called cells. Now a cell can be a block of code, it can be text, or maybe perform some type of operation such as acting as a filter on your data. Now each cell in your project can be executed in order to produce some type of output. This can be maybe printing something to the screen, this can be showing the output of your uh, SQL query. And the nice thing about all these cells is that they're friends with each other. And this means that they can communicate and share information so that we can build up more and more complex logic using these smaller building blocks. Let's look at an example of what it looks like to add a cell to our project and see how the structure of our logic view starts to take shape. All right, so I think I'm gonna start with an SQL cell uh, to get started with my project. And we'll dive into SQL cells later in a different video. But for now, take a look at how easy it is for me to write a query to return some data in real time. Now, so that was pretty cool. We have a query in here, we see some results. Let's change how the view looks in here. We can see we got an output data frame and don't worry, we will talk about this in a later video as well. But just to give you guys a little taste of what this is, this is actually is a Python data frame that stores the results of our query that we can use in a downstream cell. And the nice thing about notebooks is that information flows linearly so that something that happens in a cell above just flows down to the cell below and you can keep linking your cell together, together like this. This is kind of the basic concept and idea behind what a notebook is and how it works. If we wanna add more cells to our project, we can do so with this bottom toolbar and we can add say Python cells, more SQL cells, maybe even more SQL cells if we're crazy. Uh, we wanna do some, add some context. We can add a markdown or a text cell. They essentially do the same thing, but slightly different. And we'll look at that in a different video as well. 
uh, maybe we want to transform our data by pivoting it or filtering it or maybe we want to do a visualization you know we want to make our things look nice and pretty you know what i mean like we, we like aesthetically pleasing hex projects over here on the hex side of things you know so if you guys have ugly projects i won't look at them but if they're nice and pretty send it my way i'll be like oh my god this is so good i'm so proud of you Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so we have lots of uh, options for you to add cells, but what if we don't want to add cells just at the bottom of our project? That seems very limiting just to be only able to add pro cells at the bottom of our projects. So what we can do is actually go between our cells and we will see this little add button. And what this will do is bring up that same exact menu that we see at our bottom, puts it anywhere in our text project. So now we can add a Python cell between more Python cells or maybe a chart between some of our uh, SQL queries. Or maybe we wanna add a filter between our chart and our uh, next SQL query or something like that, you know what I mean? So we can do, we can add cells anywhere in our project, not just at the bottom by hovering between cells. So let's get rid of these cells now just to simplify our view a bit and get back to our original SQL uh, query. And let's just delete this, I'll delete you, I'll delete you, and I know you were a nice little cell, but I will delete you too. Okay, so we're left with our original SQL cell. And as mentioned before, we can write SQL queries to return data and we can make this cell as complicated as we want. And this is because uh, each SQL cell in your project is a fully featured SQL editor with autocomplete caching and a whole bunch more. So we can do things like adding filters, we can add limits, we can do group buys. And let's just take a look at some examples. So let's say I wanna limit my results to the first 10 rows. I can run that, I got a new result, or maybe even just to really show what's going on here, I limit it to the first two rows. The first two rows, just so you guys know what's going on. Okay, so now we only have two rows of data, or we can maybe group it by the genre because this is some movie data, so we can group by the genre of the movie, or we can do a whole bunch of other cool things. And this is just because, like I said before, your SQL cells are fully featured SQL editors. Now you may be wondering, Gabe, <laughs> where in the world is this data coming from? And what is this data connection you speak of? Like, what is that? What does it even mean? Well, for that, you're gonna have to check out the next video where we dive into the process of actually getting data into your hex project so you can use those to start analyzing and start playing around with it and having a whole bunch of fun. So I know we cover a lot of information in this video, but for here are some key takeaways for you guys to keep in those little minds of yours, or not those little minds of yours, you guys have some pretty big minds. The workspace is the home base for everything that you're gonna do in hex, from creating projects to adjusting your settings. The logic view is similar to a notebook in that we can add cells to build a complex logic, and this is where everything, literally everything that happens in hex happens in hex this is where all your analysis happens comments this is where you do collaboration all that good stuff happens in the logic view and lastly adding cells to your project is done from the bottom toolbar otherwise you can hover between cells and add them from the like portable toolbar option that kind of follows you everywhere you go as we move throughout this course these features will be used in different contexts and different settings guiding you towards a better understanding of how you can navigate the hex ui so that you guys don't get confused like what what does this mean what am i looking at what is this scheme what is SQL? Um, yeah, it just makes it less complicating as you see how these different cells are used in different contexts. All right, so that's the end of this video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions for what you want to see in the next video, feel free to leave a comment. If you guys want to just comment like, hey, Gabe, I think you're pretty cool because why wouldn't you comment that? Or if you want to see me hit the Dougie in the next video, if you guys want to see me hit some dance moves, let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Otherwise, you know what happens. We talked about this in the last video, so just do it, please, for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.